Our next presenter is uh, John Humphreys, and he's another visual artist. Originally from Texas, pausing briefly on the Ozark Plateau and along the Puget Sound, John Humphreys feels the Miami Valley is a location for locking in roots. Oh, <laughs> he says that's good. Yeah. Hi. Ooh, I'm behind the podium. Okay, so there's mom. Oh, there's mom. I'm going to try to talk about um, my drawings, which I call fishing around in my subconscious. So that subconscious, not the mom on this side. Um, so if it were my mom. Um, so I'll show a series of my drawings and then some works that in influenced or influenced me. But mostly, I like to look at complex systems or invent complex systems because they make the subconscious come out. They can be real or imagined. This is a hurricane on Saturn. But you start to look for ideas that are in there, or it starts to suggest images or pictures, whether they're dreamt or previously imagined, or imagine you dreamt them. One of my influences is Max Ernst in Europe After the Rain. And he accessed the subconscious by inventing a process called frottage, where he dipped um, fabric into paint and then blotted it on the canvas to look for things. Maybe this is Europe. Maybe this is um, London in a fog. Another one is Yves Tanguy. And he tried to represent, instead of a process, what you actually saw in your subconscious. And so these creatures suggest things. You know, maybe more familiar, Dolly and his stretched clocks and twisted up elephants. But these contradictory elements suggest bending new relationships and inventing new things in your mind. So there's also these things not related to art access your subconscious. The brain has to access the subconscious to understand meteorology. Um, whether you see a choo-choo or a rabbit face in the clouds, um, if you aren't on your pills tonight, um, <laughs> the choo-choo and bunny and face are not really actually there. Another thing that often happens in your subconscious is you see things that you think are in, sync are in sync with each other, and those are like flashing patterns along with your blinker. Sometimes you think, oh, my blinker is exactly blinking to the, the street lights. No, it's not, and you get frustrated when that system breaks down. So things like tying your shoes, combing what's left of your hair, wiping your brow, I don't think these things access your subconscious. I think these things are just automatic behaviors that you do. Um, they don't have the depth of those complex systems. So you swipe, political image, okay. Um, so Max Ernst in his jungle image, um, it's a process, again, by dabbing the paint soaked in cloth and starts to suggest and allow the subconscious to come forth. Automatically, by placing the title of a jungle on there, you start to look for these jungle images, animals and creatures, which may or may not exist. This one, so when I work, I use fingerprint identification software to analyze clouds. The software finds a unique polygon for the split second that the cloud exists. And in theory, if you found another cloud with the same signature, they could be the scapegoat in some stratospherical caper but they last for just a minute. So in my drawings, I make cloud constellation paintings that start with a few images of clouds, extracting the polygons of five or six of them. And then from these nearly heavenly creatures, I usually take on a, you know, I usually take them on a blue summer day so you can easily, more easily find the culprit. So those are the lines, the polygons. The blue shapes there, with my eyes closed, then I make a few gestures over the surface of the clouds and overlay those under the polygons. This is still too shallow of a surface to work in. We'll wait just a minute. It's ready. OK, there are apparently 47 verses in the Bible about weather. So I started drawing in one. I don't know what you think about this or not, but it's really inexpensive paper. Um, <laughs> So I take what thing that's left over. I mean, they're like a dollar at the half price. Um, and so from those passages, the excerpts, sometimes I collage those into the various paintings. Um, then still not deep enough. So I add this meteorological data of these wooden bits glued or built into the surface. Um, and they start to add something that I think is really nice. They add actual shadows to the drawing, so they change over time, the studio light, bringing it outside, so you get something real and time, timely that happens on it. Then lastly, some images are, some pieces are stitched into the surface quite literally. I sometimes use iron pieces, but these happen to be pieces of wool because the images, the clouds were captured in an Icelandic sheep pasture. 
So I collected some wool, they didn't mind, and I put it into the painting. <laughs> Lastly, I'm going to do an experiment here, see if this works. I'm wondering how deep you can go, and so I try to convert these images into sounds. So I'll play a couple of those sounds for you, if it works. Let's see. It should work. They're quiet. Maybe. Ooh. Let's see if I can do this. Maybe we don't get sounds. There's a little bit of sound. OK, they go something like, woo, woo, bling, <laughs> pop, pop, pop. Ah, they do that. And then I play this again for um, some Dragon software that translates it. And I'm wondering if I get into the subconscious of the computer. So they make these great poems. Will time while route see a will meet business at zero, watchmen swarm. So it starts to suggest just enough of the subconscious of the machine. And lastly, or nearly lastly, I have these other ones that I use that um, are water drop drops on a windshield because I like to drive and sketch, or swimming. <laughs> it works, it works. I don't drive on the highway, okay? But then what I'm suggesting is that maybe these aren't in architecture because that's my training, but they might suggest an architecture because architecture is complex enough with 200 billion million screws, 361 studs, 12 something cubic yards, and one electrician locked in the basement. Um, <laughs> And so with that, these are my ideas about lures for fishing in my subconscious that might become architecture um, or might be analogously translated into something. Um, but I'll let you know the FDA hasn't approved these methods. I'm done. Thank you, John. Let's give an extra big hand for John. Well done. <laughs>